Good morning. <laughs> I am already up early this morning drinking my coffee, so I thought, why not do a video? So my name is Rizzo, and I'm a type 1 diabetic, and I wanted to do a video on whether or not we should calibrate the Dexcom G6. I see this question asked a lot, and there's always a million different answers depending on that person's personal experience. So I thought I would do a video on my own personal experience and what I've noticed, what I've seen for trends, what I do in certain situations to hopefully help others decide what they would like to choose to do themselves. Now, I am not affiliated with Dexacom whatsoever. And of course, always check with your doctor um, if you have questions that really need answered, and you can always call Dexcom, the company themselves, if you need to get um, questions answered through them. <laughs> okay, so my own personal experience with Dexcom. I have been using the system for over four and a half months now. I love this system. I think it is an amazing tool, and we'll continue to use it no matter what. Like it is such an amazing tool for us, type one diabetics especially. Um, what I've learned, so days one to two on putting a new sensor on, I have learned that my blood sugars, if I check them manually, are going to be probably, I would say up to 15 points off. That is another topic. <laughs> okay, so the first two days I put on a new sensor, I know that it takes a while for the Dexacom to read my blood sugars and to get on track. And it can be typically anywhere from one to 15 points off. So with that being said, do I calibrate? Well, I don't now. But I've been using the system for four and a half months and I know what my body is doing. I know what the Dexacom is doing. And so I have that trust in the system. When I first started using Dexacom, I checked my blood sugars more often and calibrated more often. So if someone is wearing a brand new sensor, you know, that has been on for 10 days or under, I've never ever had a problem calibrating. All I've noticed is if I do calibrate, all it does is make my numbers on the Dexacom more accurate to match my actual blood sugars that I'm taking manually. When I first started, I think I checked them with every meal and then at bedtime every day. And I did that for about a week and a half. And then once I kind of trusted the Dexcom for like mealtime areas, then I moved to the point where I would just check my blood sugar manually every night before bed, before I took my long acting. And I would say I did that for probably a month and a half. Um, after that month and a half, I really started to trust the Dexcom system and I started knowing my body compared to the Dexacom and always in the back of my mind, I know that the Dexcom could be off and I'm going to use how I feel compared to what that number is to decide if I'm gonna just leave that number alone or if I need to check my blood sugar manually and then go ahead and calibrate it again. So the first two days, my numbers are usually a little further apart. So my blood sugar manual, versus my Dexacom numbers are usually off, I would say, you know, by the 15 points. Days three through 10, um, typically if I check my blood sugar manually, it is within five points of the Dexacom number. So I've done this long enough now that I know the first few days are going to be off a little bit more. And then days three through 10, um, are gonna be more exact numbers. Now, with that being said, 
if I start to feel funny, you know, if I start to feel a low blood sugar or a high blood sugar, or if I just get that gut feeling like I'm just not feeling right, I'm going to go ahead and check my blood sugar manually and see where I'm at. I will do so and then I will calibrate it into my system. Now, Dexacom, the company itself says, you know, no calibration is needed. So when you first put on a sensor and it boots up for the two hours, it will not require you to put in a blood sugar manually when it first comes on or the entire time that you have it on. But what that means is you don't have to calibrate, but that doesn't mean that you cannot calibrate. It is a tool and the more personally I think that you calibrate, um, especially when you first start using it or when you first put on a sensor, the better accurate numbers that you get on the Dexcom compared to your manual blood sugars. So that is my personal experience and that is with wearing the Dexacom as it should be 10 days or less. Now, you've probably heard through other videos or through other websites that you can restart an old sensor. So like leaving a sensor in past the 10 days. It is not recommended by Dexacom. And I can tell you that personally, I have done it. I wanted to try it out to see if it was possible. And then I wanted to see Um, so there are ways that you can restart and reuse the same sensor and keep it in for a longer than 10 days. Um, I personally wanted to try this out to see one, if I could do it, if it actually worked. And then I also wanted to do it if it does work in case I ever need it in an emergency situation. So let's say if I'm ever away from home and I don't have a new sensor with me, I wanted to be able to know how to restart an old sensor in case I ever needed to. And I am currently on day 19 of my sensor right now. Tomorrow I will change it out. And that's a whole nother video on restarting it. But for calibration, I have learned it's a completely different story when you are restarting a sensor and wearing it from like day 10 to day 20. In that situation, the very first time I tried to calibrate or to restart a sensor, I waited the two hours, it popped up and it was fine. And my numbers were pretty high. And it panicked me. I checked my blood sugar. I was lower, way lower than what the number showed on my Dexacom. So grant you, this is day, you know, day 11 um, on the same sensor. So I panicked. I put in my calibration that was like 80 points difference. And then it kept asking me on my Dexacom to calibrate every 15 minutes and it did so for like over four hours. I finally, it drove, it drove me nuts. So I stopped it and took it off and put on an actual new sensor. So I wanted to try it again. So at the end of that sensor's life of 10 days, I went ahead and tried to restart it again and was successful. It did the two hour boot up and again, it came on with an extremely high number. It said like I was over 300, which I knew I was not. So I checked my blood sugar manually. I was like at 102. So learning from my previous time, I knew now either one, don't calibrate it as soon as it pops up or two, that I don't want to calibrate that 80 point difference. And I wasn't sure which one was causing it to do the 15 minute, every 15 minute calibration. So I did a little bit of both. So 
My number on the Dexacom when I restarted the same old sensor was over 300. So what I did is I just left it alone. I did not calibrate. I just checked my blood sugars manually and paid attention to how I felt. After I would say about two or three hours, my blood sugars gradually came down to where I thought they would be. Well, after like two or three hours, it did come down, but it kind of got stuck at 180. And I knew again that I wasn't up that high. I was only like 100. So I went ahead after two or three hours, I put in a calibration of 160 because it was still saying 180. So after doing 160, I waited for about 15 minutes and then I calibrated it again at 140 and then waited 15 minutes, calibrated again at 120, waited 15 minutes and then calibrated at the 102. And then it was within a pretty close range of what my manual blood sugar was compared to the Dexacom. Now, since then, I haven't had any issues. Um, I have noticed that again, my blood sugars are off a little bit from the Dexacom, but I'm on day 10 to 20 of my sensor versus zero to 10 days. So yeah, so that's what I have learned. Um, if I'm wearing a brand new sensor and it's the first few days, my numbers are gonna be off a little bit and I only check it if I feel low or high or if my alarm goes off low or high or if I just get that gut instinct that I need to check it. That's what I do. And then days three through 10, again, I don't calibrate at all. I just typically watch it and know that it could be anywhere from one to 15 points off. And again, I just check it if I'm low or high. And then now for my first experience of extending an older sensor from days now 10 to 20, um, I've learned that the calibration process is definitely different on restarting an old sensor not to calibrate it right away, to let the system do its thing for a couple hours. And then if I do calibrate, I try to bring it down in increments of 20, and then I put a 15 minute span in between each of those, um, just so that way it doesn't overwhelm the system. So I hope this helps. I'm definitely, um, after tomorrow, I'm going to change my sensor to my normal new spot and plan on changing my sensor every 10 days as um, they recommend. Again, I just wanted to do it once to make sure that I could do it and make sure that I know how to do it in case of an emergency and go from there. And now I've learned about the calibration on that process too. So it just gives me kind of a lead if I ever need to do it. So if you guys have questions, definitely put them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help you um, you know, figure out, or if you just want, you know, someone to say, yeah, it's okay, or mm, I wouldn't do it right now. Um, but it is a personal experience. You will learn how your body reacts on the Dexcom and you'll know what to do. And yeah, so thanks for watching. <laughs> and if you guys want to hit the like and the subscribe button, so you can always see all my videos that I post. And hopefully you guys all have a good day today. I know I'm gonna drink the rest of my coffee. Go check my blood sugar manually because I'm not getting my reading alerts for some reason. It's probably because I'm on day 19 versus, you know, day two on my center. So love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.